Uh, there is a uh, a new and exciting deck that I think we're going to play. Uh, honestly, a little bit inspired last night by Debo's attempt at a Jeskai Walls deck uh, that uh, I had seen a mono blue artifact list that we're going to build together here. Uh, take a little bit of time on the front end of the stream, but then I'm going to jump into some games and uh, and hopefully get a couple of wins under our belt. Get an opportunity to kill 15 of our opponent's creatures. Looks like we've still got one more weekly win for the quests as well. And we are going to get right into it. Let's jump into decks and whip this up. So... Uh, I've got a mono blue artifact list that I want to play uh, with a card from Core Set 2020 that has really caught my attention. And I think the attention of a lot of other people as well. Oops. Flood of Tears. So this is like got that in Ixalan, there was a, uh, a card called River's Rebuke that actually saw some good competitive play, giving us the ability to bounce all non-land permanents to their owner's hand. But the the difference with this is, and Saffron Olive has been playing this card a little bit, but the difference with Flood of Tears is that we actually get an opportunity to put a permanent from our hand back onto the battlefield after we reset everything. And we're going to be running four copies of Flood of Tears in this deck. And we're going to drop down to ten islands. That is what the list calls for. Am I omni flooding? <laughs> I don't know what omni flooding is. That's a weird verb. What does that mean, Slipknot? What is omni flooding? Oh, okay. Something to do with the card here. But let's. We're gonna go with. This is gonna be an artifact deck. We're gonna try this. Try an artifact deck. I'm not ready to give up on them, and there's a bunch of cards here that I want to try again before rotation because we're gonna lose a, a number of these cards. Uh, that we'll be playing tonight. So, uh, Gilded Lotus. Need two of those. Uh, looks like we're going to have to craft one, which is fine. Couple treasure maps. Ah! <laughs> Did I sp oh, treasure maps. That's not the name of the card. <laughs> Couple treasure maps. Let's go with three of the new Karn. Karn the Creator. And this Karn is spectacular. I mean, he's seeing play all the way through Vintage, Legacy. Even some modern decks, specifically like Tron decks, are playing this Karn. Not so much maybe this Karn as, uh, you know, big 7 CMC Karn, but... Uh, no, not Omniscience, Flood of Tears. Nope, I'm going, I'm going with an Artifact Jank deck. I'm kind of inspired by uh, last night. Uh, no Omni Flooding, but I do love that that's the combined name of the deck, actually. Uh, Omni Flood. So, uh, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I love that name, in fact. Omni Flooding. Cool. Okay, so three Karn the Creator. Let's go with three Manifold Keys. Which, uh, new uncommon from... M20 here. Untap another artifact. Target creature can't be blocked this turn. So we've got an opportunity kind of for some shenanigans. This is almost key to the city-esque in the way that it can actually make one of our creatures unblockable. Uh, but specifically, we're going to be using it for mana ramp or combat and then untap phases. So, or untap before we pass the turn. So, uh, lots of good, good options with this card. And playing a mono blue artifact deck, we'll be able to find some uses to it. And one of the things about these kinds of decks where you're playing all these artifacts and a mono color, you've got Planeswalker supporters, there's always so much to do. Do I know how competitive it's going to be? Not really. But uh, we're going to try. We're going to try to play well tonight as well. Why, why play poorly, I suppose, is the real statement. So three manifold keys. We're going to run four of the new Ugin the Ineffable. Because what do colorless decks like more than Ugin the Ineffable? We're going to run some Power Stone Shards for some colorless ramp. Full play set of Power Stone Shards. For each one, we get to tack on a little bit more mana. This can really become pretty nice. We don't want to draw too many of them, especially early game. We want to have other options. Flooding Power Stone Shards is generally never good. 
Um, but lots of options there. I like Managey out here as well. Managey out. Get a Scry trigger. When we couple that with the Zalfir and Voids, which we'll get to in just a little bit here, we actually get to compound additional Scry triggers. Adds a little bit more flexibility to the deck. Uh, when we look at additional scries, we start stacking scry triggers. It's uh, it's really important for us to be able to do that. So, uh, four mana geodes, full set. May seem like too many, but uh, bear with me here. And if we need to modify later in the night, we can certainly do that as well. Uh, we'll talk about that as the night goes on. So, Guild Globes. Draw a card. Draw a card. That's what we need. Two mana of any color draw a card plus with flood of the tear flood of tears we get to actually recur that draw card ability we're going to be bouncing a number of these artifacts back to our hand uh, most of this ramp and the artifacts will make sense here in just a minute as we get further into the deck so we've got the four copies of flood of tears this is the big namesake for the deck we could call it flartifacts <laughs> flart flartifacts yeah i'm okay with that uh, four Traveler's Amulets. Get to get our blue mana. Make sure that we have access to the double blue when we need it. We're only running ten islands. So, uh, critical that we have the opportunity to get to that search for it. Slipknot, how's your night going, by the way, brother? You doing well? And what you would expect in a an artifact deck? Sigh. There he is. Three copies of Psy. Nice. Got your hair cut. To go with like a 12-inch green mohawk straight down the center or what? I'm like, wow. What did you do? Because if I had the opportunity, I would do that. But as you can see, we are devoid of that kind of luxury. We, 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 don't, we don't have that, that kind of luxury. Over here, brother. <laughs> no luxury. So, all right. Three copies of Psy. So, did you dye it green? Green is the color I would dye it if it was up to me, man. Not your hair. My hair. I would never dye another man's hair. Unless we've known each other for some time. Four copies of Renowned Weaponsmith. Not only is it a good blocker with a three toughness on the body, uh, but it uh, give, gives us, again, additional colorless ramp to activate artifacts, uh, to cast artifacts. It adds some synergy to the deck that I really, really like here. Uh, copy of Blast Zone for those oops. Uh, didn't go green with it. Nope. No worries. No worries. There's always next time, right? One copy of Blast Zone. Go with those Zalfir and Voids. Again, more scry, scry Triggers. We really like to have the Scry Triggers here, and we need additional colorless. Well, we don't need additional colorless mana, but colorless mana works for our deck, so why not use some additional Scry Triggers to make that easier? Arch of Orozga. Sees to it that we have the opportunity to draw additional cards and we have the city's blessing and we're putting all of this crazy mana production to use. We're going to end up burning some rare wild cards on this, but uh, why not? So four copies of Arch of Arazga, and then we've got the 10 islands and that's our main 60. Let's move over to the sideboard here. Uh, so one of the big things about Karn is that we actually get the ability to plus one him, turn target non-creature artifact into a artifact creature with power and toughness equal to its converted mana cost. So Gilded Lotus is a really good hit here. Any of the three drops are good hits here. Uh, but that's the plus one ability. What we're really looking for here is to be able to essentially expand our deck into 75 cards and utilize the sideboard uh, for additional content in our deck. That's why we're running three copies of Karn. Uh, because he lets us search for any of our answers out of the sideboard and really address some of the substantial issues that we may run into. Uh, kind of hit our opponent with a surprise left, if you will. So, uh, 
sideboard options. One of our first in terms of solving problems is the Sentinel Totem. We need Sentinel Totem to be able to exile all cards from all graveyards. It is critical that we have the opportunity to do this. Uh, and when we exile the Sentinel Totem, we can just minus two Karn again and get it right back. So Karn is incredibly powerful here. We can just continue removing things from the graveyard, removing things from the graveyard, removing things from the graveyard. So one Sentinel Totem in the sideboard. Uh, second card in the sideboard. We are going with, of course, three negates. Sometimes you've just got to have answers, right? We need copies of negates in the sideboard. Blue decks need negate. Uh, to be competitive, it's important that you actually have access to it. So, Navigator's Compass, some life gain, gives us the ability to fix some mana issues if we run into those. Two copies of that feels pretty good. Uh, we can actually tuck back on the Traveler's Amulet, bring in two of the Navigator's Compasses, and then we need some additional life gain incursion. Uh, it's a very good thing. So, uh, additional cards in the sideboard. Obviously, this is one of the new ones that's caught my attention and should be catching your attention too if it hasn't, is the Mystic Forge. So Mystic Forge, uh, we can look at the top card of our library at any time, kind of like an experimental frenzy, but for colorless. Uh, we can cast the top card of our library if it's an artifact card or a colorless non-land card. And with a lot of the mana production that we've got going on here, that can become very, very expedited. Uh, we can pay one life and exile the top card of our library to get back to casting artifacts should we actually need to. Okay? So, uh, good stuff there. You may be asking yourself, where's the win condition here? Make no mistake, it's Psy. Psy is ultimately our win condition. Ugin's going to help us get there as well. It is kind of a slow game that we end up playing. Uh, one of the things that you may also be saying is, well, why aren't we running the Antiquities War? And that's a good question. I had considered it. Maybe Antiquities War is one of those cards that we can include if we decide to flip up the deck a little bit. Let's pop a copy of Mox Amber in the sideboard, just in case we need an egg. Uh, let's go with one copy of Meteor Golem, because when you absolutely, positively must squash something, Meteor Golem, except no substitutes. One copy of the Golem. Let's go with a Magistrate Scepter as well. Extra turns is always a good thing. This is rotating. I wanted to at least get an opportunity to try to play with this a little bit. What better way to shut down Planeswalkers than this little doozy right here? Three copies of Sorceress Spyglass. I love this. Not only Planeswalkers, but uh, it shuts down Planeswalkers as well. So uh, that's really where we want to be with this. Uh, Sorcerer Spyglass. Very, very good card. I like God Pharaoh's statue in this deck. Uh, God Pharaoh's statue can completely shut down a game, especially if we can get there early. We can lock our opponent out of any substantial or meaningful growth. Uh, it can be an excellent hit off of Karn the Creator, especially if we've got the mana production to pop it in. One copy as an answer. One copy of God Pharaoh Statue. And then the, un, the last card that I wanted to bring in is a Manifold Key. The last copy of Manifold Key in the sideboard. And what I was thinking is maybe we drop this Manifold Key for a copy of the Antiquities War. But I need to be able to go to the sideboard for artifacts. Before we continue, does anybody from the chat have any recommendations on cards that maybe we should consider for this or are we ready to hop right in hey maddie how you doing it's good to see you man maddie is here slipknot's here all right let's uh let's name this deck and we'll name it florida facts you know, I'm not sure about artifacts and standard at the moment as well. I'm not I'm not sure about it, but I'm sure that uh last night, sorry about that. Hit the mic there. 
but I'm sure last night Debo inspired me to get down with some artifacts or at least give a jank deck a try. And uh, this, with Flood of Tears, may catch everybody off guard. This this seems to me like we've got chances with it. We've been wrong before, so it may just be another night of us getting our butts kicked. Uh, but I don't care. It's really more about the fun than anything else. So we'll see him at Florida Facts and... Oh, that's right. We got to craft some cards first, don't we? Where is the craft button? Oh, it's right there. Okay. <laughs> that would have been funny. To just fail. Miserably. So seven rares and three commons? Sure. Alright. And the deck is ready. Let us go. Uh, oh, something's going on with the mastery. There's our current level. And just for the sake of being part of the school of Never Scared, uh, let's jump right into some competitive games. Golden Guardian seems like it could be good. Um, Golden Guardian is the one that flips into the land to make the... Oh, uh, the 5-5s, five fives, right? Boy, I haven't thought about that card in a while. Alright, let's play first and see what the deck gives us. Sure. That's totally keepable. Four fours, that's right. Four four golems. <laughs> Alright. Well, thanks for taking the time to join us again. I really appreciate it. I always love spending time with you guys. Uh... Land, say go. That one was for you. Alright. I'll go Gil Globe, draw a card. Well. Things kind of seem promising. Paradise Druid. I say we go ahead and try to resolve Sight. If he's got the Lava Coil, sets us back just a little bit, but only just a little bit. Spellbreaker's fine. I'm a big fan of I'm a big fan of Travers Traveler's Amulet here. Megathopter. And Power Stone Shard. And we can crack the Traveler's Amulet and thin the deck a little bit. Choose an island. Could have saved that until his turn, but no sense in doing that. Got trample. 4-4 four, four trampler. Little Domri. Nothing like a bit of violence now and then. I guess he's gonna fight Psy. That makes sense. We are the there we go. Uh, 
I mean, we're taking five. That's what we're doing. Uh, let's go... One, two, three. That gives us six into Ugin. Let's go to combat first. And clip this. Go to damage. I'm not finished with you. A not little power shot. stone shard. Yep. And that gives us... Ugin. Lightlessness and fear are the seeds. Minus Ugin. Uh, seemed like an okay turn. It seemed like an okay turn. Five mana is, of course, very scary. Spellbreaker. Perfectly acceptable. Losing Ugin. Another Paradise Druvid. Gives it haste and trample. We'll lose an Ugin. Oh, blocks. Play a Zalfir and Void, get a Scry Trigger. Yeah, we'll bottom that. And then let's... Tap for four. And Karn the Creator. No attacks. And then we will minus two Karn. And I think we go... I honestly think we go with... Uh, uh, I like Meteor Golem here. I really like Meteor Golem here, but we can't cast him. So... The Forge seems like the right choice to me. God Pharaoh's statue is also fantastic. Kind of locks our opponent out a little bit. But I need something. I need something. So let's go for the Forge. And end the turn. Sarkhan the Masterless? Sure. If he just drew that, that's a great draw. Behold! I'm liking this so far, though. We'll see how it goes. Aggro, I'd imagine, would be pretty pretty bad for us either way, but we've got we've got chances here. Well, do we let Karn go? And I don't think so. We want to definitely try to keep him around. But we've got a resolved Mystic Forge. So... Yeah, I say we let him go. No blocks. I will be better prepared next time. Okay. So, it'd be great to be able to hit a Psy here. Um, we've got the City's Blessing. So, why don't we Manifold Key? And cast Ugin. And 
plus one. Secret before you. Seems pretty good. Get that flood of tears going, drop an Ugin again. Seems pretty good. Um We're gonna be able to block blo both the flyers. Stop Ugin from taking some damage. We want to draw that. We badly want to draw that Flood of Tears for next turn. So, next we'll skip combat. No attacks. In the turn. Sarkhan the Masterless on the plus one becomes a 4 4. Pass to attackers. So, pass to blockers. Here, here, here. Pass the damage. See, the cool thing about this is, is after we flood of tears, we resolve the Ugin, and then all of these one and twos come down for free. So one, the Power Stone Shard pays for itself, then we've got more mana compounding, we've already got the City's Blessing, uh, we've got some really cool stuff that we can do here. So, uh, let's, but first, let's exile a permanent with Ugin, and then we can get the reset when we dump him right back down, right? Because we're going to return four or more. So this is really one of those cyclical plans that we've got going on here, and it ends up being pretty cool. Really pretty cool stuff. So, Ugin. Go ahead and destroy that. Flood of Tears. Boy, that was dumb. <laughs> so Flood of Tears returns everything. Put Ugin back onto the battlefield. Traveler's Amulet is free. Manifold Key is free. Power Stone Shard for one. Power Stone Shard for one. Guild Globe for free, draw a card. Guild Globe for free, draw a card. Seems pretty good. Play an island for the turn. Play a Mystical Forge. Play a treasure map for nothing. <laughs> that seem okay? Was that a misplay? <laughs> And then we plus up Ugin. Hey, that's pretty good. And we can go ahead and cast Karn the Creator as well. For two. And, uh... Let's minus Karn. For some real shenanigans. Go with the... Yeah, I like Meteor Golem here. And why not play a Guild Globe for nothing and draw a card? Seems pretty good. Oh. Okay. Explain, explain that to me, Slipknot. What do you mean? What do you mean? All right, end the turn. Let's 
Spellbreaker. Gives him haste. Zerti Goblin. Gives him haste as well. Yeah, I could have had the mana floating. You're absolutely right. Pass to attackers. Brings them both. Pass the blockers. Got to take three anyway. We might as well trade off a creature equitably. Pass the damage. A foolish move. Well, let's see. What can we do? Do we want to get that renowned weaponsmith? Not really. Let's go ahead and pay a life. Exile the top. All right, that's fine. Maybe we should have kept the renowned weaponsmith. <laughs> All right, my turn. Tra Traveler's Amulet for nothing. Play an Arch of Arazga. Uh, go ahead and plus up Ugin. Get that island there. Another Flood of Tears. So we get to do it again. Hey, Debo. How you doing? Feeling tired today? Not going to stick around and hang out, huh? Fine. Eh, let's Meteor Golem. And pay five. Uh, we'll plus one. Karn. Targeting the... Forge. Awaken. And... Uh, go to combat. Okie dokie. So we got him. So missed your nap today. <laughs> it's a work day. <laughs> Do you generally take a nap when you get home or something? I don't understand. I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> so anyway, that was pretty good. And there's literally nothing that we'd want to bring in except maybe negates, right? So we could drop one, add one. Uh, the manifold keys were good. Drop a treasure map, add one. Uh, actually, why don't we go ahead and add a treasure map back in. Drop a mana geode. And add in a gate. 61 cards, so we need to drop... Let's drop another geode. And then be done with that. So you saw the power of the deck for us to be able to completely sweep the board and then play everything from our hand out again using Ugin's minus two. Draw a bunch of pack, draw a bunch of cards... Uh, oh, Sphinx of the Guild Pack? That's a good question. Like I said, we can modify this stuff on a go forward. I'm completely fine with that. Okay, so this is acceptable. We can almost keep anything with this deck, or at least it feels that way. So. I'm imagining he brought in some thrashing brontodons. You know, if he if there's cinder vines for some reason in his sideboard, we're in we're kind of in big trouble here. And we'll amulet. Of course, c catching a copy of Psy would be really good for us as well. Swing it for one. Weaponsmith. Yeah, Domri's okay. So, um, yeah, let's, let's start dumping some of these artifacts. That's what we wanted for sure.
I'll keep that mana geode. Probably should have kept that guild globe for Psy as well. Let's go ahead and crack the uh, the amulet. And grab another plains. Or, excuse me, island. That's not a plains at all. It's not a plains. <laughs> There's a good chance Tezzy could fit in here. I mean, really, we get to do some crazy stuff. This is a Flood of Tears deck. I'm calling it Flood Effects. Slipknot named it, but yeah, Tezzy could probably fit in here. And if he does, let's try him out. The Skargan Hellkite's a problem for us, right? It's definitely a problem for us. It's saying... That I can cast artifact spells or artifact abilities, and it's highlighting the renowned weaponsmith, but we know for a fact we cannot use the renowned weaponsmith to cast Ugin. Or is the game glitched? Can I use renowned weaponsmith to cast Ugin, the ineffable? It's highlighted. Should I try? Oh! Well, I'm really dumb. That wasn't the time to cast Ugin. <laughs> that wasn't the time to cast Ugin at all. Okay. Yeah, what? It So, the renowned weaponsmith tapped to pay for the ability for the guild globes to sacrifice it for two mana of any color and use my remaining lands to cast Ugin. So, the game is smarter than I am. This is what just happened. And that should be no surprise, no great surprise to anybody, really. At this point, so. Alright, so we've got Let's let's Karn here. No, we don't Karn here. We don't Karn here. We we renown Weaponsmith. And then we sigh. Damn. We really don't want to sigh either, do we? He's just going to minus Domri. I should have Karned. I should have Karned, and then I should have grabbed a Sorceress Spyglass. That would have helped us get there. Because I need to be able to sigh and then cast an artifact in order to block the Pelt Collector. Well, it's got Trample now. Ah. <sighs> All right, let's let's just mana geode and see see if we can't try to increase our mana. That is probably not what we want to draw. Boy, casting that Ugin at the wrong time really hurt me. I thought maybe the game was just going to tell me I couldn't cast it, but it turns out that it just sacrificed all my artifacts for me. Uh, I wish it would force me to go through those steps. I really do. I wish it would force me to go through those steps, but it didn't. And so he's going to minus and fight here again. Let's Karn the Great Creator. Since we have two copies of it, we've got to try to find an answer to this Pelt Collector here. And we'll minus two. And even if we can't find an answer to... A Meteor Golem's really good here, but we don't have enough mana to cast him reliably next turn. So why don't we just Sorcerer Spyglass. Spyglass naming Domri. And he's got a Lava Coil in hand as well. So, Icy Manipulator would be great in this as well. Absolutely. It's slower. Like, we really want to hit a Flood of Tears here. We want to resolve a treasure map. 
Cinder Vines. It's a good option against our deck. We want to get that Flood of Tears. We're going to lose the card. We know we're going to lose the card. So he can pop the vines to hit the spyglass. Which is also fine. And he can lava coil on his next turn. Icy Manipulator does seem good in the sideboard. And I'm open... I feel like there's, you know, I've got an extra manifold key in there. I've got some other stuff because it's really what we're anchoring off of is that combo. We haven't seen the Flood of Tears yet. And again, that early Ugin, uh, that was my fault uh, for sure. So I'm taking damage from the uh, the vines. Anyway, so this could get really bad. Why is he timing out? We might as well put it in there. Just because we're going to draw the next card behind it as well. Yep, coil on side. Makes makes total sense to me. War boss is good here. It's real good. Um, uh, I mean, I'll I'll get one of the creatures. Try to stabilize our life total here. The non-tokens don't, or the tokens don't help us with Flood of Tears, so. Uh, Guild Globe. Draw a card. Cinder Vines. Taking damage from the Cinder Vines. And we drew a Flood of Tears. Which I can't cast. Ah... <sighs> Well, we've got another blocker. Mm. That might be a lost cause with this one. You be quiet. You be quiet. Hush, kitty. Um, let's see. You know. I'm gonna die. I'm dead. Alright, let's go game three. And yeah, maybe, you know, we can tweak the sideboard. I'm not opposed to that. We need a better... A better opening play here. And the negates... Uh, I don't know that they helped us. I do like, like, Domri early having to find the spyglass. That was pretty bad. Uh, bringing in the additional spy glasses and just having them main board. Maybe? Maybe? Uh, Geode seems pretty good. The Amber seems good. We could gain a little bit of life. We could drop two of the Navigator's Compasses and go with the Traveler's Amulet. Or, excuse me, the other way around. Strike that. Reverse it. Um, I mean, we have access to everything else on the sideboard anyway, except for the counters. Let's try to get that combo off again. Really, the Ugin Flood of Tears thing is what we're going for. We, we didn't see a single Power Stone shard that second game. 
That really does kind of help us. And a resolved Ugin again at the right time, as opposed to having the game prove to me that I could cast it. Okay, so this works great. This, is, this works great. I'm okay with this. We're going to keep this. We'll stay on the play. So, Zalfir and Void. Scry Trigger. We'll keep that. On the top. And then Navigator's Compass. Seems good in the sideboard. Sure does. Pass the turn. Pass the turn. My turn. We drew what we knew we were going to draw. Can we name Domri without him having it in his hand or it being on the board? I would think so. I'm going to go ahead and cast... Well, it's not... not critical yet. Let's go ahead and get the Renowned Weaponsmith out so we can expedite the rest of our artifacts out of our hand. And we are low on lands, so... I'm going to run a 19 here. I probably should be running a few more. Or 20 lands. 20 lands. So that's fine. What you got in your hand, bub? Whew! That is uh uh ugly, ugly. That is a full-on problem for us. So I can only name things. Oh, I can type in dummy right here. Domri Anarch of Bolas. Yeah, I should have named Cinder Vines. You're right, because he can destroy my artifacts. <laughs> ah, well. <laughs> GG's right. <laughs> Yeah. Things aren't over yet. Yet. <clears throat> we got a really good sample of what the deck is capable of in that first game, but we've kind of dirtled these last two. So maybe we'll make some tweaks to it and then get right back in there for some more ranked games. We'll just let the damage through. Probably a mistake, but whatever. Gotta be able to draw something good, right? Not that. Doesn't matter. It's still gonna deal damage to me for each one, so... Well, it's 
So maybe next game we actually mulligan for some ramp. Maybe that's where we need to be with it. Because that first hand I had plenty of ramp. Thorn Lieutenant's good. Just dumping him. Great opening hand, and he drew into the lands. He only had three lands when he saw his hand, but he drew the other lands that he needs for these other creatures as well, which is what I would expect from Gruul. Well, that's not going to get us there. We need more of that early on. Mm. Well, that was interesting. Let's see if we can't tweak this sideboard a little bit. With all these artifacts, we may honestly consider going ahead and running. I thought you said we couldn't drop below uh, tier two. Debo. It looks, it very clearly looks to me like we dropped below tier two. Maybe that was my fault that time. Maybe you can only lose so many games. <laughs> Oh, well. All right. So back to the deck real quick here. Let's take a look at this. Um, yeah, what we really want is to be able to have a Resolve Dugan to reduce the casting cost of our, of our cards. And maybe we don't actually modify the main deck at all throughout the course of the game. Maybe we just depend upon sideboard options. But if we look at what's in the sideboard here, um, we can dump this manifold key. Because what we're trying to do is... What, they, what they're trying to do... It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I, I could care less, honestly. The Sorcerer's Spyglass makes sense, but the Amber is really more of one of those eggs for Psymaster Thopterus, right? We want to be able to Flood of Tears, drop an Ugin for free, then Psy, then regenerate our board with a bunch of free artifacts that are in our hand, and the Amber becomes one of those for sure. Sentinel Totem's good for Graveyard Hate. We might be able to drop the one additional Manifold key that's in there. Because the Manifold key is specifically used for the Mystic Forges. To be able to untap it, pay a life, untap it, pay a life, untap it, pay a life, etc., etc. Just keep doing that thing, right? Um, yeah, Transmogrifying Wand would be good. Chaos Wand would be good. Actually, let's go with Chaos Wand. I, I am interested in running a copy of Chaos Wand in the sideboard. We're going to do that. And then we'll drop... Ah, I like the Amber, too. Magistrate Scepter is really good. Especially if we have ridiculous amounts of mana and the the Manifold keys. There's a chance that we could actually create some pretty stupid stuff with that as well. Putting charge counters on it, removing three charge counters, taking extra turns. Uh, I don't know. Let's let's run it back again. I, I'm not going to give up on this deck just yet. I mean, that first, that very first game we played was a real, a real idea of what this is capable of. And again, team never scared. Team never scared. Thanks again for taking the time to join us tonight, guys. Nate, how you doing, brother? It's good to see you. Slipknot's here. Debo's here. Maddie's lurking. All right, so one land and a Traveler's Amulet. I just don't know if that gets us there. Maybe it does. It's it's a super risky... I mean, Okay. Let's go for it. We've got the renowned weaponsmith. We're starting slow. Gutter bones. Mm. 
So, a Mardu or Rakdos aggro could be a real problem for us. Crack the amulet. Grab an island. Okay. Yeah, Blue Tez would be good, too. We should probably do that. The Mayhem Devil's interesting. Uh, I'm going to take a damage, huh? So, Rakdos... This is that Rakdos aggro deck that uh, was in the 5-0 lists recently. This is a lot like Slipnate, you guys. Actually, surprisingly, the day after we played that in the Ixalan event, this deck was in the 5-0 lists, and it's very effective. It's... It's very effective stuff. So we can pay one, crack the Traveler's Amulet, take a damage, Maybe take more damage here, grab an island, resolve a renowned Weaponsmith for his removal before attacks next turn. Because <laughs> that's the way magic works. I just want to play my cards, but he doesn't want me to play my cards. Need a match? No. Bringing you out some elementals play. when he sacrifices them. Ping, ping. It's a great combo. Look at this, guys. It is Slipnate, right? Spark Harvest. Very nice. Okay. Oh, yeah. We're in trouble. Wait. Just way too slow. Just way too slow. Uh, we could Karn. Grab the Sorceress Spyglass. But we're dead. We have to play a Psy here. Don't worry. I brought company. The Plague Crafter is a nice new addition to that. I actually really like that. Well, that is fast. That is fast. Good ideas are often pummeled in the face of speed like that. I don't even I don't even know if we have answers to that. We've got to resi resolve a sigh earlier. Right. Uh, that was fast. Wicked fast. And now you understand why See, I told you artifacts was a terrible idea, guys. <laughs> oh man. Okay. It could also be the fact that we kept a one-lander there. Maybe. We didn't really play anything. Mana Geode, Power Stone Start, and we're still a land-off here, right? We're a land-off. We're a day late and a buck short. This is not a keepable opening hand. We have to mulligan this. Okay. Alright, that works. We'll keep that, and we'll... I think we bend the flood here. No. We build the... We bend the geode. If we can get to the flood... <laughs> what are you laughing at, Debo? <laughs> What are you laughing at, brother? <sighs> okay. 
So we've got a Psy. Definitely going to die to remove. I love that that combo, by the way, with uh, uh, Priest of the Forgotten Gods and the Chandra. It's just so great. And the Mayhem Devil. It's like that deck was made for one another. And again, interesting that Nate's idea for this Mayhem Devil deck uh, can pop the Priest of, For Priest of Forgotten Gods right now, force me to sack the Psy. Can just do it. Look, look how quick that was. Great synergy there. Very good, in fact. And the Priest of the Forgotten Gods gives you... I told you artifacts are a bad idea. Look at that! Drops another Lazatep Reaver! Where'd that mana come from? Oh my god, that's so good! Look at that! We're already basically in a soft lock there. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. This is pretty close to a rotation proof deck too, isn't it? Yeah. Like this Mayhem Devil deck, it's, it's pretty good. Pretty close to a rotation proof deck. Drops all their lands. That's really interesting. Um. Sad that all we can do is Karn. Well, what can I grab with Karn here to help us? That's way too slow. Mystic Forge would really help. So we're going to grab that Forge. I think we want that forge. Five, six, seven, eight, nine next turn. Okay. I need lands. Yeah, that's that's what this deck needs. Is lands for sure. It's only got twenty. I thought maybe that would be enough with all the artifact ramp, but it's definitely not enough if you're not hitting your artifact ramp. So that first that first example, if only I had that geode. <laughs> that's funny. Sure. Go ahead. Gonna get the Ugin for sure there. Oh! Gets one of the Flood of Tears. Okay. Problem is I can't resolve the Ugin and hit the combo. I can't get I can't get the non-token permanent after the flood because I haven't hit any of my small artifacts here. Sure. 
That makes sense. Sure. Our opponent's got our number this game, guys. For sure. Ah, oh, boy. Got the other flood. Game is over. I mean, I can hit the God Eternal Bond too, but I'm down to three. I mean, I'm not one to just scoop, but I think we've lost, fellas. Unfortunately. Oh, yeah, Joy Row would be fantastic, but then we got to go red with it. You know, maybe Tezzeret is the way to go. Mono blue Tez. But then we've got to really increase the numbers. We might as well go Antiquities War with it. So, just play this out. The first, uh, the, both of our matches so far have been extremely aggro based games. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, the double duress on the Flood of Tears was pretty great. The Storm the Vault would be great, too. That would be an excellent solution. It'd be an excellent solution. Losing rank down into Tier 3. Well, man. This is making me bloodthirsty. Soiled it. Hashtag soiled it. Yeah, Black Tez would be good too. I mean, we could modify that artifact deck, but like I said, I'm feeling bloodthirsty, so uh, I'm going to try to punish somebody with what is a much more competitive list for a moment here. And then I'll get back to it. We'll start working on that deck. We can all kind of mess with it a little bit together. It'll be fun. Artifacts. That first game went so well. It went so well. It's all sequencing, I feel, unfortunately. I'm not going to let it affect my mood, okay? I'm not. Commune with dinosaurs. Looking like we're dealing with some John Dinos. Definitely Gen Dinos. Oh, Fleet Swallower? Yeah, Fleet Swallower might be, in fact, very excellent for our purposes. Yeah, we'll enter tapped. Go Wild Wolf Walker. No attacks. We've been playing, we've played, oh wow, with a Larg and Fleet Swallower? That sounds fan fantastic in terms of some jank. That's great. That's great, in fact. I love that. I love that. Ah, no blocks. Well, Jade Light Ranger, Jade Light Ranger. Yep. Uh, keep that on top of the library. 
Got a ravenous poopa cobber coming. Gain some life, no attacks. Homeboy gets to discard a card there. Galta's, of course, a problem for us. But even the Chupacabra gets the Galta. It's an attack trigger, but it's tapped and attacking. Doesn't it happen? Wouldn't the attack trigger still go off? Or is it because it enters the battlefield tapped and attacking? You don't actually get to declare it as an attacker. The trigger wouldn't fire. Which, not gonna lie to you, seems wrong to me. Uh, no blocks. Try to get some lands here. There we go. Gain some life back. Uh, I think go temple for a scry trigger. I'm okay with that. And we'll leave that right where it's at. And, uh, no attacks. We have a very fortuitous next turn. Yeah, you have to declare it as an attacker. How do I think it eats the Galta? It disconnects its lower jaw. And it's a chupacabra. See, it actually consumes things like a snake. So it like slides like that over things, right? It's basically one big piece of intestine. That's what a chupacabra is. Just like that. And it makes that noise too. <laughs> You have to declare it as an attacker, Debo. Not me. One bite at a time. <laughs> so I take it way too far. I'm like kind of gross. And you just make a funny quip. Good for you. Good for you. So this is officially a mature stream. <sighs> when we do something like that. Getting a visit. <sighs> it's just sitting there. It's just sitting there. It's the first one of the night. Thank goodness these don't have haste. And he's just attacking with one, two, so no blocks. And I'm okay with that. Should I not be okay with that? Because I am. I'm okay with that. So let's go Ravenous Chupacabra. And maybe we clip... Yeah, we'll get the Rotting Regisaur. And we'll cast down... the other Regisaur. He's not too far from Galta at this point, honestly. Uh, but no attacks there. Just try to stabilize a little bit here. <laughs> yeah. Poor Jack Daniel. There's actually an apostrophe after the L. Like the signature on the bottle. I don't know if I can get it on the stream there, but if you see that? See the signature on the bottle? There's no S. It's just Jack Daniel. And then if you look at the label, there's an apostrophe S. Yes. So, uh, tonight officially, officially a, uh, a mature stream. So, uh, we will block one Ripjaw, give him the ability to drop some, draw some cards. And I'm going to block I'm 
I'm gonna block the other Ripjaw as well. I know he draws a couple cards, but... And he can draw a couple cards. That's fine. If one of them's Galta, he ain't casting it this turn. Or maybe he is. <laughs> sure. That makes sense. Uh, do we casualties here? For just a creature? <laughs> you guys are a mature audience. But, uh, except for Debo. But everybody knows Debo doesn't get it. I mean, he does. He does get it, but... Uh, we'll go with a Woodland Cemetery. I'm not opposed to that. And Find Finality is really good for us here. Uh, but I can't get that card back right now, can I? So... We will be blocking with the Cavalier of Thorns to get the Find back, to get the Life Recursion going and put the Wild Growth Walker out of reach. Again, no attacks here. John Dinos. The Thorn. What about it? Oh, you were saying, what should I, in terms of what I should cast? I agree. Dinosaurs, dinosaurs are just so good here. So finality would be great for us, actually. Yeah, that's a problem. Kinda. Well, I can get the finality back, but I have to survive this. So we'll kill the Marauding Raptor. We'll kill this. We'll chew up one of these. And we'll double block here. No, that's not right. We block here. We block here. We block here. And we block here. Blocks. Yeah, I'm, I'm killing the Rotting Regisaur. Doop, 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 doop. He's having a hard time with this. Nice! Regisaur survives. Well, that's a problem. I blocked the wrong alpha. Yep, that's the problem. I didn't get the two. So I have to finality here to stay alive and then sacrifice my wild growth walker. Oh no, I don't. My walker will be out of reach for him. So This still feels pretty good. Yeah, I could have saved three damage.
He gets to draw a card. That's probably a land. Play your land, sir. It's not a land. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go ahead and... How many layers do we have? We've got eight. So let's go ahead and find back... Our... Jade Light Ranger and our Jade Light Ranger. Uh, I think we go ahead and bend the grave, uh, the Branch Walker. Then we keep that. And then we Jade Light Ranger again. Oh, the Choops would have been good too. Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Back up to 14. Mr. John Dinos. Uh, well, I'm going to start beating him up pretty good here. So, as much as this sucks, I'm going to go ahead and... Because he's not... He's not going to play any artifacts, no enchantments. But I'm going to get a creature in the land, damn it. Choose a creature. That one. And... One of your black sources. I'm going to play a wild growth walker. With the 11, 13. He's just going to skip through my Sequencing is what the game of magic is all about. And I'm terrible at that. So... Uh, let's see what helps us here it's not Massacre Girl it's not Brontodon shifting Ceratops isn't bad but yeah the turn before I like the idea of Ashiok here just as kind of a I mean Liliana we don't get rid of Liliana we've got just the right amount of removal I mean, we almost run it back here, right? We almost run it back? I'm thinking we do. We don't need Crucible because we're not trying to destroy Fields of the Dead over and over and over again, over and over and over again with our Field of Ruin. Ceratops does help us get a little taller, but we need all the removal we can get, and we need as many of the hits of the Wild Growth Walker as possible. <sighs> all right. Now yeah, here we go. Ashiok can be really annoying, but does it detract from what the list is currently doing? And the answer may be, I mean the answer may be yes. In fact it does detract from that. So uh just a little bit of it left. I mean there's there's not really much in here. So good. Once it hits your lips. All right. Let's see what we get. That is not a keepable hand, my friends. We got a mullet. And we're going to go with that. We're going to bin a... going to bin a field of rune. Why would you say Massacre Girl should have come in? None of his creatures are below three toughness. Except maybe, well, maybe the Elves, which would then get the Odapec Huntmaster, which would then get the Marauding Raptor, which would then get the Regisaurs, the Tokens. So maybe. 
if the stars align for us in some way, then maybe. Maybe that works, but I don't think Massacre Girl actually comes in. She's more for, like, Hero of Precinct 1, the Red Cavalcade deck, any number of really other silly things. I have small creatures, yes. You're correct. Now, the question is, do I immediately trophy the Rotting Regisaur? And the answer is yes. It could help. I mean... If one thing... If there's one thing I'm certain of, Debo, it's that we know you have good ideas. We know you do, so. <sighs> Did I not play a land last turn? That's bad. Okay. Uh, so. Another trophy. Kind of smell a Galta here. I don't know about you guys, but I... Kind of smell a Galta. And we can get him off that black source next turn. Um, my knees should have trophied on upkeep. I agree. Yes, I agree. He's got the mana for the Galta. Who knows? Who knows? But Hitting the timer. Great. Just super. So yeah, Debo and I have been talking a little bit about trying to get a giveaway uh, set up. We were talking about it a little bit in the stream chat last night. I think we'll actually have some good activity on that after this next weekend. Uh, try to figure out what's going on there. So before we go any further, I'm going to go ahead and trophy out your Ripjaw Raptor. And then you may absolutely Savage Stomp. And he got another Black Source there, so... No Blacks! Oh, come on, Deck! <laughs> come on! Why? Why do you hate me? Let's just do stuff. There. Just hates me. Just hates me. Of all the things to draw. It's not a land of war elf. But we do have a blocker. And he did not recover another basic land there. Oh. <laughs> uh but something fishy with the algorithm there. I'm not I'm not too sure, but I just replaced that land. 
just give it to you. Then again, there's only 60 cards to draw. Mathematical odds are pretty high that he would actually draw that. Crazier things have happened, right? Chance of getting dealt pocket aces is 1 in 281. Uh, let's see. Or is it 218? One of the two. So, we gotta stay alive here. What can keep us alive? We gotta stay alive. Yeah, the tokens got trampled. For sure. Something else had trampled, too. That. So that was a waste. And that's the game. That's the game, ladies and gentlemen. Thinking. Hello. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, so we could try Massacre Girl, or maybe we go a little bit, maybe we go a little bit taller. Maybe we drop one Lanawar Elf for Massacre Girl. Let's drop all the casualties of war. Go another Massacre Girl. Two Shifting Ceratops. Drop one Fine Finality and one Cavalier for two more Ceratops. And see if we can't get there with this. More cheap, low to the ground, five fours. You know, maybe we maybe we trade equitably, I don't know. We didn't touch our explore package which given the right draw excellent that's great now we just need to draw other cards like other cards really try to get there so uh temple of malady scratcher sure we're curving we're curving You know, there were times sitting down playing Paper Magic when we were uh, consistently catching FNMs, and we really do kind of still consistently catch FNMs, where I remember seeing Wild Growth Walker and just being... I don't know, what's a good way to put it? Disappointed with the game that I was getting ready to, to play through, right? Where, like, Wild Growth Walker... kind of ruined my night a little bit. We'll get Trigger Trigger and go Ravenous Chupacabra. Bring in the uh, Overgrown Tune. Un untapped here, and you know what? Why not? Let's uh, let's go to combat here. For three. Opponent's going to cast a cheapy Jun 7-6. For sure. But he sees that Chupacabra. So what does he want to bait me with, right? Commune with dinosaurs is okay. Spends a turn ramping. That's fine. I know for a fact John Dinosaurs runs a couple cast downs in the sideboard. Uh, there is some spotted removal that comes in. Spot removal. Spotted removal. I remember people hating on Explorer and Wild Growth Walker when it first came in, says Debo. I built Path of Discovery and annihilated with it. I remember that as well. I remember that very well, in fact. Uh, let's go ahead and... Ceratops? And just let him know that the Ravenous Chupacabra is sitting there. Just... Just make him hate it. And he's probably got... My guess is that we've got Collision Colossus in hand. Right? And that he's going to try to Colossus out one of the creatures. And Colossus would save him from death on both of our creatures. So we'll go no attacks. Uh, 
I'm a no, no troops yet. No troops yet. So now the Collision Colossus is out of reach. Yeah, it's not bad if I lose the Jade Light. We've got the fine finality in hand. We had left another copy of it in, but this is really kind of our only kill switch, right? Savage Stop is good. That's good. We needed the Wild Growth there. Cavalier's good here, too. But we'll go ahead and stop any of his potential draw card with the Ripjaw. Ripjaws are just problematic. And we'll go to combat. And now the find becomes much more viable for us as well, right? Yeah, the, the find. Yes, thank you, Nate. See? Nate is a quality magic player. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but... Dude knows his shit. I mean, it's a good turn. It's about what you'd expect from dinos in terms of a bounce back. We can also finality giving the two counters to our shifting ceratops and leave him in a terrible situation here, right? And I think that that's what we do with the cavalier in hand. I think that's what we do. Let's go ahead and finality. I'm going to go with my gut here. Yes, put two plus one plus one counters. <laughs> Whoops. I should have given it trample. No, he's not what? Are you guys whispering in the in the chat? You guys are whispering about me in the chat. Five viewers. Already I'm getting criticized. Uh, no, we'll, we'll deal that damage first. Just in case you got shenanigans going on. Trade him off. <sighs> Seems pretty good. And he double blocks. <laughs> oh, Nate is a good magic player. <laughs> oh. Come on, let's love one another. Hey, 
Hey, I reordered that. No! No! How do I how do I undo? Undo! No! Can I choose a different card? You may! No! I chose the wrong card! Disaster! Total disaster! Oh! Oh no! That's horrible! That was horrible. Control Z. So literally undo. Control Z. Okay. Yeah, sure. Oh my god, that's horrible. It'd be great if it let me rip Liliana one time off the top here. No. Let's pass the blockers. Block this. Horrible. Just horrible not to get my finality back. Of course I can't rip my Liliana off the top. Got a Jade Light Ranger. Sure. Oh, that's just horrible. Oh well. I'm gonna lose another ranked game here. This is game three, right? Yeah. Oh, man. <sighs> Stupid ass misclick. Yeah, sure. Here we go. And we're dead. <sighs> Oops. Wow. We would not have lost that game if I'd have brought my finality back. Or maybe we would have, actually. Jeez. Well, I think these last two nights have been solid confirmation that we should not stream Magic the Gathering Arena anymore. Mastery. Mastery tree. There's a core sitting there. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that, Nate. Again, I feel like I'd have had a better chance without a misclick there on that last game, but, uh... <laughs> oh, thank you. That's true. That is true. That applies to so much. That applies to so much. Well, we've got Disfigure or the Drake, which gets us to Aether Gust, Dungeon Geists, Disfigure, or nothing else. We're pretty close to maxing out the tree. So let's keep going for black there. Legion to get to the legions in. We'll go disfigure. I think disfigure is going to be a big card after rotation. I guarantee disfigure is going to be a, a big card after rotation. Three losses tonight, Debo. That's what I get for making fun of you. Karma's karma's a B, isn't it? Karma is one of those things where you make fun of your buddy for having a rough stream and then you go in build an artifact deck they take your face and wipe the floor clean with it and then you pull out your competitive deck because you're hungry for blood and lose because you're terrible at pointing at things on the screen 
<laughs> and I'm not bitter. I would never make fun of Debo for having a big butt. He, he does that himself. Well, that plus Jack. I'm not intoxicated at all. All of the whiskey that I've had is, is what you've seen me drink uh, on the stream. That is not... That ain't gonna get the job done. And that is neither being braggadocious or alluding to anything else. So, reserve your judgment, please. <laughs> ah, Dread Horde Invasion. How I love thee. Let me count the ways. Do we Assassin's Trophy the Dread Horde Invasion? Because it just throws a wrench in all of our plans. Or do we wait for the casualties of war and continue with our explore package? Thank you for your input. Debo, l listen. 44 messages were deleted by a moderator. <laughs> everything that you typed, everything that you typed into the chat all night, deleted because you can't stop yourself from typing in all caps. We should probably remove that all caps thing unless it's like truly excessive. And I think there's a lot of specificity that we can add to those rules. Uh, and we should probably do that at some point. Because typing in all caps really isn't all that big a deal. He's got two! And I've got another Assassin's Trophy. It's like the game is telling us something, right? It's telling us to Ravenous Chupacabra that guy. And let our opponent slowly kill themselves with Dreadhorde invasions and just troll the bejesus out of them with Assassin's Trophies. <laughs> hey, make me a mod. Okay, sure. All right. Uh, so we really needed a, a second colored mana source here. Uh, we can definitely slow the roll uh, quite a bit here. Ooh, finality is exceptional here. We don't want to pump in that Ebon Legion out of out of range. So we'll top that. And then let's go ahead and Paradise Druid here. Just to set up our board a little bit more. And... We'll trophy... We'll trophy the Knight of the Ebon Legion. Because I hate that card. Debo, were you made a mod? Can you type something into the chat, please, so I can confirm? Mr. Moderator? Mr. Moder. Yeah, I'll, I'll save that other trophy for sure. Trophy is a game-winning card. No attacks. Save trophy and just finality next turn and and wipe the board clean <laughs> oh rekindling phoenix is a problem this is an interesting jund deck that we're playing against so far here it's interesting Well,
This is a, this is a curious situation that we find ourselves in, isn't it? Well, you guys got any ideas? I think we set ourselves up for success here. So do I. Thank you. But yeah, it, w it was a good play. I'm, I'm sitting here quiet. I, I guess mostly because I'm waiting for you guys you know, to interact, but I understand that I should probably be talking and be more entertaining all along the way here. Spawn of Mayhem's a problem for us. So, I can see maybe thrashing Brontodon coming in the next game. This is great for us, Cavalier of Thorns. Yeah, Cavalier's great option for us. Leaving up mana for the trophy. And another casualties of war. And I can find back some life if I need it, but I think the finality's probably better here. It's just probably better, because the finality... I can trophy after blocking the Rekindling Phoenix if he decides to swing. Token is getting lifelink next turn. Is it? Damn. Damn, that's a problem. Probably should have waited until afterward. Whoa, the groovy blue vibes. Spanky, my man. Hey, Spanky. How you doing, brother? It's good to see you, man. Good to see you, man. Spanky, KC. The owner of Spanky's Card Shop. The best Magic the Gathering store in all of Kansas City. You cannot travel a direction for 150 miles, probably 200, and find a better store than Spanky's Card Shop. Uh, sure. Go ahead. Resolve all your stuff. That's fine. Pass a draw. We can remove the stop at this point. <sighs> but yeah, Spanky, thank you for stopping in, brother. I really appreciate you. Uh... It is a great establishment, man. I feel very fortunate to have befriended Spanky and Kevin along the way. And Brendan as well. Good guys. Brent, excuse me. <laughs> I always intentionally call him the wrong B name when I come in. Or I just don't remember names very well. One of the two. Either way. Maybe we, we set the stop during... No, Spanky, I love you. Let's not get into love, okay? Okay? Damn, dude. The fucking spawn gets out of reach. And finality is just really not good here. Yes, I will start swinging. I'm going to start swinging. Fine, okay? Another goddamn field of room. Let me just send him. Just 
Just send them all. <laughs> Let's just send them all. Let's just send them all and see what happens. Pull back the druid. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, not the druid. Right. I'm walking with you guys. I'm walking with you. Oh, we got him. Got him. So what's the hit off of the Cavalier? Another casualties, pick up an Assassin's Trophy. Yeah, punished is right, bro. Sure. Problem is, nothing survives here. But that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, it doesn't matter where we put them. No, I don't... Here. What? Okay, fine. <laughs> now let's get it back. Yeah, the Wild Growth Walker and the Jade Light faux show. Get that Explore package going again. Hello. All right. We got an honest to goodness Magic the Gathering professional in the stream with us, helping us play the game right now. No bullshit. Somebody who's won a GP. Back when GPs were cool. Do we keep uh, the Assassin's Trophy on top? Sources say, sure. What happened to my Jade Light Ranger? He scoops. I don't understand. Oh, he's shocked. I missed the shock. Won a GP without ever losing, plus a red eye flight to the USA from Australia. Just big swinging brass. Clang, clang, clang. <laughs> All right, so... An interesting Jun deck there. Rekindling Phoenix and Dreadhorde Invasion and kind of some weird stuff going on there. There's no graveyard recursion that we'd really need to worry about. I feel like going a little bit faster, adding a couple Brontodons probably helps us out here. Casualties of War certainly does help. We've got options there. Probably don't want to drop any of the find. Cavalier's great card. Maybe we can trim out a Merfolk Branch Walker for Brontodon. Uh, probably drop one Casualties of War. Nah, we'll keep the Thorns. But drop one Casualties of War for the other Brontodon. And I don't know if Massacre Girl really helps us, Right? He's not playing a lot of tokens. We're seeing Spawns of Mayhem or Kindling Phoenix. Uh, you know, the Dreadhorde Invasion token really doesn't even become an issue for us. I'm starting to think maybe I should bump another Liliana into the sideboard. I, I mean, Massacre Girl is great in certain scenarios, but... All right, let's run it back like that. Let's try it like that. See what we can't do. A little bit of Tuesday nightly relaxation. Yeah, the boost 
the boost probably comes in and the boost is loose. Two wild growth walkers, no explore. Is this a keepable hand? Yeah. Yeah, we'll run it. We're a game up. Louise. Go tit for tat with our opponent here. Yeah, we are in a German rave. They are German. I did love Germany when I was over there. Beautiful place. Great people, the Germans. Disco dance party. Do we want to block? Mm, probably not. I can't gain life. Not gaining life is a problem, right? Right. Uh, I think we druid. Hold back the other wild growth walker just in case of any shenanigans. Plus, we don't have any explore triggers just yet, so doesn't hurt us to develop our board and pressure this tittled here a little bit. Paradise Druid has Hexproof. Give me all you've got. Tibbalt wants me to give him all I've got. No comment. Uh no blocks. Sure, another devil. Must have boarded in more than one Tibble. Decided that that was a really key choice. Okay. You don't look that is just fine. Um. Boy, that's going to feel really good to be able to finality in a moment. But do we slow him down for the time being? And I think the answer is yes. Probably should have saved that, right? And we need that mana. Spanky's absolutely correct. Should have killed the devil. Oh, that's a problem, too. The fine finality is going to feel real good next turn, though. I adore an audience. No, it's not. It's going to feel horrible. <laughs> trigger, trigger. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, it's non token creature. Whew. Whew. Boy. That's not good. Um I mean I'll I'll block the combat damage. Is the stuff my stuff's gonna die anyway, so. Trigger trigger. Damn it! That was dumb. I blocked the Paradise Druid. <laughs> uh, yeah, 
attacking with shit anymore. Or maybe he is. I can't finality now, but I can finality next turn. Cavalor Cavalier's still fine, right? We're still good here. He's got a Judith in play. But he's not getting any Judith triggers off of all these tokens he's creating. Noxious Graphs is good. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> uh, target a card. So, the shoot. Take that action. I think it's a better play anyway. Yeah, well, I mean, let's see. Let me block the two damage. Is that last card in his hand a burn spell or a shock that he's willing to commit for the wild growth walker? Spawn of mayhem. It's fantastic. This is great for us. I mean, that seems completely reasonable to me, right? Sure. Jade Light off the top would be great. Why not a Rick and Phoenix, folks? Hey! It heard me. The game heard me. Oh no! That's a problem. Rekindling Phoenix is a problem, right? Definitely. Um, boy, Vraska's contempt would be great here. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, we gotta commit to the line anyway. Even if I can't damn life. Sure. The the thing is, can I do both of them? We'll leave it there. Five, six, seven, five, six, seven, eight. I cannot do both of them. Uh, in the turn. I can't do both. I can't gain life. So Tybalt's interesting. It's a great answer. It's a great answer at our deck. A lot of that resilience of the deck is mitigated substantially. So do we find something back here? Because the Cavalier... Well, the Cavalier is exiled. So there's nothing really here that would do us any good at all. Um, we can finality and kill Tybalt, though. But then we gain haste and we lose next turn. He gains haste, we lose next turn. I think we've lost this game too. I really do. This is probably a scoop. Because I cannot cast both spells. Blah, 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 blah. All right. Let's go to game three and get to the sideboard. See what we can do here.
Nice long stream tonight. Win or lose, this will be my last game. <sighs> Gotta go do the responsible adult thing tomorrow. Which sucks. Believe me. Just like all of you have to do responsible adult things tomorrow. Which I'm sure you feel sucks. Because this is way better. If we just sit here and do this all day, that'd be great. Of course, I'd have to convert it to a standing desk because I can't be sitting here all day. I need to stand and you know do the whole thing. Okay, so uh, we've got about a minute and 17 seconds here to try to make this deck better against our opponent. Is he searching his library at all? He's not. Uh, let's... Ch -ch -ch -ch. Yeah, we'll drop the Brontodons. Go Massacre Girl. I'm good with that. Cavalier's good. Drop one of the Fines. Eh, probably not, actually. Seems like a terrible idea. Drop... We haven't seen Liliana all night, but she'd be great for us. She's just great in general. Uh, let's drop a Lanawar and put a Branch Walker back in. And call it good. All right. We're running Massacre Girl, Diva. She better win us this game. Ugh. That's a terrible opening hand. Do we chance it? Nope. Okay. We'll keep that six. I think we've been a trophy. Could have cast the Merfolk Branch Walker first, then drop the Temple of Malady for the Scry Trigger. It's all about sequencing. All about sequencing, guys. I think, anyway. It was only my first day playing Magic, so... And to watch, you'd probably think that that was true. Well. Uh, let's pass the blockers. And so he chose that one to keep it alive. Night Spanks. Thanks, man. I appreciate you dropping into the stream, brother. I really do. Uh, getting a little late in the night for myself. I'm sorry I'm not engaged actively into the camera, but I should be. I should make that a constant practice. When I'm sitting here and you guys are spending time with me, I should be talking to you the entire time. So play the Cavalier. Go ahead and bend some stuff. Again, Spanky, I really appreciate it, man. 
If you're interested, we'd really like to put up a logo for the shop on the site, if you're still here listening to us, but uh, I'll give you a call at some point. We'll kind of work through it. See see if you're interested. Definitely don't want to cop your style, cop your flow, whatever. But we love you, man. Thanks for stopping by. Okay. One attacker. 2-1. Into the red zone. He's going to swing with him. Pump. Give it death touch. Do I block with the Cavalier? Sure. Seems reasonable to me. I mean, we want to block with the Cavalier. Or do I just let him sink the damage on me and then crack him back for eight? And then block when I have to for the casualties of war. Yeah, I'm not going to block. Not going to block. I'm going to let him sink the damage. Sure. Get your plus one, plus one counter. Oh, that's gorgeous. Finally, she shows up. Finally. Finally, she shows up. I know there's only one copy of her in the deck, but I really wish that she'd hang out with us some more. Spanking that booty. Man, Liliana is such a good magic card. I mean, she's just... I mean, she's not better than maybe the Eldritch Moon Liliana. Certainly not uh, better than Liliana the Dark Veil, but... Liliana of the Veil. Gruel Spellbreaker is an okay card. And Judith is perfectly acceptable as well. I think I have to Liliana here. And then I think the smart decision is to actually minus her. Or is it? Yes, it is. It is the smart decision here is to minus Liliana. Oh, I do love to sacrifice a Lana War Elf and this Branch Walker. Yeah. Yeah, let's set him back. Let's set him back here. Two triggers. Targeting Lily. Our opponent takes five. Ravenous Chupacabra is not a bad draw either. Another Cavalier of Thorns practically seals the deal for us here, so. Well, that's lethal with the Chupacabra, fellas. That's lethal. Unless he resolves another creature. Uh, no blocks. Can you deal me 15? No way. Sure. That's just fine. And that is not lethal. And we have to Chupacabra the spawn of mayhem before uh, things get out of control at all. 
So. Yeah, let's just chew the spawn. Yeah, definitely get a creature in at Tibble. That's probably the best idea. And so we're still okay here, right? We're still okay. We've got a blocker. We're going to maybe take some trample damage. The devil deals us a little bit of damage. But the devil's in the details. <laughs> oh. But... Um, yeah, so Cavalier is good here. Cavalier should be good here. I'm just going to go ahead and block. Go ahead and block. Save us a little bit of damage. Even though technically that would have been lethal, wouldn't it? But Tybalt's gone, so... Now fun. And party time. Play another blocker. I should have played that after attacks. Oh! There it is. There it is, boys. So it wasn't a total loss. We lost three games today. Two with my artifact deck. One with my Golgari good stuff deck. Good stuff deck. And then we got one back. We got one back. Damn it. So. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think, I think grinding for Mythic is really just the number of games that you play. I, no doubt that there's a level of skill that goes into it. No doubt. But grinding for Mythic is, is definitely going to be just sheer volume of games. It's going to take a commitment. And since Debo and I are streaming five nights a week, we should be able to drop that commitment. The thumbnail will be great for tonight. Great. Thank you, Debo. Thank you, brother. <laughs> as much as you can embarrass me as possible, the better. And I've already told you that. And that's not sarcastic. So actually, don't take that too far, please. Anyway, Nate, uh, Debo, guys, thanks for joining me for the stream. Uh, I really do think that we may have an opportunity as I close out the stream here to continue to do something with artifacts. I just don't know if I was quite there. That first game. So if you go back to the beginning of this stream, if you've watched all the way to the end and somehow missed the beginning, uh, but at the at the very beginning of this stream, uh, that first game I played with this deck was exceptional. It was exceptional. And, and blue-white would be good too. I'm not going to give up on this before rotation. I still want to try to figure this out. I don't think that Tezzeret Master at the Bridge has really got their due uh, compense, if you will. Uh, but Golgari good stuff is definitely something that's up there. And maybe Debo and I will make a push. We'll talk about it this weekend. And maybe yeah, Mono Blue Tez too would be great, Debo. But Debo and I will maybe make a push uh, for a Mythic rank, right? When you go to our profile... You can see that there are very clear rewards, even just for obtaining the mythic. So we should be pushing for this every season. And I think we can get there. We've just got to decide on two very highly competitive top tier decks, build them and just play them and try to play well, learn our sequencing and play well and take it seriously and try to win every game. You know, bring that competitive edge that for some reason we only bring to Friday Night Magic's but try to apply that to arena as well. Either way, guys, uh, again, thanks for taking the time to join us for the stream tonight. And uh, Debo will be live again tomorrow night for Wednesday's stream. Uh, we can't do this without you.